Welcome back. In this part of the course, I will reconstruct the historical events that led to the fall of Jerusalem after the revolt of King Zedekiah, as stated in the second book of Kings, chapter 24, verse 20. Vaimrod Tzidkiyahu b'melech Bavel. Already in this introduction, I would like to make it clear that in order to understand these events, one should not think only in terms of cold political decisions, signing treaties in the right geopolitical timing and entering into an alliance with strong allies after rational consideration. One of the main reasons for the decisions made in Jerusalem at the eve of the revolt and during the period before the destruction of Jerusalem were not cold and rational, but part of what I may describe as theological madness, the belief that Jerusalem will never be conquered because of God's promise to Israel. These ideas probably started to develop in Judah already after the destruction of Samaria in 722 to 720 BCE when the small kingdom of Judah survived. After the Assyrian campaign of 701 BCE, when Judah suffered heavy destructions, but Jerusalem was not conquered due to what was interpreted as a miracle, these voices became stronger and clearer, and the idea that God chose his city, his temple, and his dynasty forever as an eternal promise became stronger, especially among the elite of the nation and the people in Jerusalem. These ideas mark the main line of the Deuteronomistic historiography from the end of the First Temple period. It was probably one of the main reasons that led ministers in King Zedekiah's government not to hesitate when they decided to revolt. We know about it since on the other side stood Jeremiah, probably with a small camp of supporters, among them the family of Shaphan the scribe, family that we'll meet very soon. Jeremiah tried to fight against what he interpreted as dangerous theological ideas, something that after a short period when Jerusalem and the temple had been actually destroyed was understood as a wise and right observation. But it was already too late. Jeremiah lived in Jerusalem among the local Judahites. He spoke the same language as the other Jerusalemites and was deeply influenced by the ideas of the eternal promise that the God of Israel gave to his people concerning his city, his temple, and the dynasty. But Jeremiah understood that this is a conditional promise, a promise that was stipulated by two conditions. The people of Judah and especially the leaders of the nation should obey the laws of God and they should also understand that this promise will not protect them from wrong and mistaken political decisions. They also should not trust this promise and make foolish political decisions trusting God to protect them. In Jeremiah 7, for example, the prophet warns the people of Judah that only if they will amend their ways and doings, only then God will let them dwell in the land, only then God will let them dwell in the land that he gave to their fathers forever. In verses 3 and 4, the prophet is saying, Ko amar Adonai tzvaot Elohei Yisrael, Heitivu darcheichem umaalaleichem, Vashakna etchem bamakom aze. Al tivtechu lachem el divrei ha-sheker lehemor, Heichal Adonai, Heichal Adonai, Heichal Adonai hema. In verses 8 to 11, the prophet is warning them. Hine atem botchim lachem al divrei ha-sheker levilti ho'il. Haganov, ratsoach ve-naof, v'yishavay al ha-sheker v'kater la-baal, v'halok achare Elohim acherim asher lo yada'atem, uvatem v'amadetem lefanai ba-bait hazeh, asher nikra shmi alav, v'amartem, nitzalnu? למען עשות את כל התועבות האלה, המערת פריצים היה הבית הזה, אשר נקרא שמי עליו בעיניכם, גם אנוכי הנה ראיתי נאום אדוני. ג'רמאי is sending the people to a concrete historical precedent, the tent of the covenant in Shilo, Shilo, that was destroyed because of the people's sin. In verses 12 to 15, he is warning them that a destruction of Jerusalem might come as well. 
כי לכו נא אל מקומי אשר בשילה, אשר שיכנתי שמי שם בראשונה, וראו את אשר עשיתי לו מפני רעת עמי ישראל. ועתה יען עשותכם את כל המעשים האלה נאום אדוני, ואדבר אליכם השכם ודבר ולא שמעתם, ואקרא אתכם ולא עניתם, ועשיתי לבית אשר נקרא שמי עליו, אשר אתם בוטחים בו, ולמקום אשר נתתי לכם ולהוותיכם, כאשר עשיתי לשילה. והשלחתי אתכם מעל פניי, כאשר השלחתי את כל אחיכם, את כל זרע אפרים. Jeremiah's views didn't get much attention and he didn't succeed in his attempt to prevent the destruction of Jerusalem. From our historical analysis, the events that led to the revolt and the destruction are already clear. The continued instability in the southern part of Hatuland, together with the increasing threat by Egypt, forced Nebuchadnezzar to invest massive resources to maintain continued rule in the region. The events surrounding the beginning of Hofra's rule in 589 BCE caused Nebuchadnezzar to modify his policy. He decided to conquer the small vassal kingdoms that remained close to the border with Egypt and to annex them and rule over them directly as Babylonian provinces. The consequence of this new Babylonian policy was destructive because Nebuchadnezzar created a buffer zone between Babylon and Egypt that consisted of devastated, diminished provinces. There is no evidence that the Babylonians invested any kind of effort in economic development of the provinces in the region. Furthermore, Nebuchadnezzar used the destruction of the region as a lever for rebuilding those parts of Babylonia that had been damaged during the long years of war, devastation, and deportation caused by the Assyrians. Large groups of exiles from the ruling economic and religious elite of the local kingdoms were sent to Babylonia and settled in devastated areas in order to develop them. It is against this backdrop that we must understand the destruction of Jerusalem and the transformation of Judah into a Babylonian province. Despite the unequivocal impression given by the historiographical descriptions in the Bible, as well as the prophetic literature and the lamentation over the destruction of Jerusalem, the Babylonian reaction to Zedekiah's revolt should not be viewed as a total act of vindictiveness against Judah, nor an impulsive punishment for the revolt. It was a carefully calculated act with political aims and was the first expression of the changed Babylonian policy in Hatuland. The intent was to remove the Davidic dynasty from power after it had proved itself disloyal time and again, and to destroy Jerusalem, which had shown itself repeatedly to be the center of resistance to Babylonian rule. The Babylonians wished to establish a province in Judah whose center would not be Jerusalem and which would be headed by a person not from the Davidic line. In the biblical description, as well as in the archaeological findings, there is no evidence of a destruction of all the kingdom's territories or deportation of the population in its entirety. It seemed that the Babylonian action was focused on the heart of the kingdom, Jerusalem. Total devastation would have also been against the Babylonian interests because they needed the population of Judah as the human nucleus for the new province they had established. They also require the continued existence of the settlement and agricultural areas in order to collect the annual tribute and provision the Babylonian troops stationed in the country. Destruction in the periphery of the kingdom, the Negev, the Jordan Valley, and the Shvela was apparently the side effect of the collapse of the central system. 